let's say welcome to Bruce Lipton. Uh, good to have you on the program. Thank you for coming on. Oh, I so appreciate this. It's, it's just a wonderful time for some new science to come into the world as we face uh, global crises that are forcing us to think differently. Uh, absolutely. Gl uh, global crisis. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, what do you mean by that? <laughs> Well, uh, we're beginning to, to recognize that the way we've been living our lives has created uh, profound interruptions in the normal cycles of nature and the cycles of life on this planet. So, for example, uh, it is now recognized in the biological realm that uh, we are experiencing what is uh, referred to as the sixth mass extinction of life on this planet. Mm -hmm. there, there were five times in our history where life essentially got wiped out uh, by uh, changes in the environment, usually uh, uh, well, at least suggested to be caused by things like asteroids or comets hitting the Earth and changing the environment, uh, so that six time, uh, five times in our history, uh, life was essentially just uh, almost stopped on this planet and then started all over again, uh, each time bringing in new species and new organisms. Well, what's interesting is uh, science has now recognized that we are not flirting with mass extinction, we are actually deep into the sixth mass extinction to hit this planet. Really? It's already been calculated, for example, that uh, within 50 years, and I think 40 years is the point, uh, half, uh, the, the fish in the ocean, the food fish, will be, be uh, fished out. That hmm. the uh, that the we've changed the environment so much that we're we're actually killing the oceans now. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, I think this becomes important for us to recognize that uh, they're, they're, we're facing a, a crisis in that regard. But what's interesting about the current sixth mass extinction, the five previous ones were done by things like extraterrestrial forces, like I said, comets or asteroids. Mm. But the one that we're facing right now, scientists have clearly revealed that it's actually uh, resulting from human behavior. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So why this is important is that we are actually causing changes in the planet that are leading to our own extinction. Uh, would you say that humans are, you know, kind of uh, a part of that extinction as well? Meaning, are we killing off ourselves too? Absolutely. The, that we that we only exist because of the environment and the ecology and biosphere that existed before us. So that. Uh, our evolution is really based on the evolution of all the organisms that preceded us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If we destroy that network matrix of life, then we completely uh, destroy the foundation upon which human life is, is based. Hmm. So that uh, destroying our world is leading to our own personal destruction. It's, it's interesting that you mentioned the sixth uh, kind of die-off that is going on. I've heard uh, theories, I guess, expressed that this actually has been going on for many thousands of years. Uh, and, and it feels like kind of what the humans are doing now is kind of just the tip of the iceberg. I'm not sure if that is right. Uh, have you heard about that? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's always been uh, extinction, but the rate of extinction, that's what's changing right now. Mm -hmm. The rate uh, uh, of extinction is accelerated beyond anything that we've recorded in, in, in recent history, so that there, there is an, uh, an active, more active engagement of extinction processes now than there was just a little short time ago. Mm -hmm. Part of it has to do with the uh, uh, global climate change, of course. That's very critical in all this. And, and also, it's just that uh, the way we have distorted our environment uh, with uh, the concept of, like, uh, clearing the rainforest, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, these are very profoundly important for our survival as well as the biosphere. Uh, James Lovelock, uh, the scientist from England, came up with a concept called the Gaia Hypothesis. Sure. And he said that the Earth as a whole unit is a living organism. It has a physiology. The Earth has a breathing and a temperature and, and, a, and a biology to it as well. And what what's going on right now is that uh, because of our activities, we're, we are so uh, affecting the planet's physiology that it's hard for the planet to make balance again. Uh, and as a result, the, the shift in, in the ecological crises that are affecting the, 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 the seas and the land and the air mm. are, are pushing us to that extinction faster 
than ever before. Now, the fact is, yeah, there were extinctions, <laughs> obviously, before humans got here, but the acceleration and the, the critical nature of, of its impact upon us has now become more apparent than ever before. It, it's also very interesting is that uh, the global crises, especially in climate control, uh, we're looking at them and we're saying, oh, yeah, things are, are changing. And what the public is not really aware of, and I think it's because... Uh, I'm just saying this offhand that uh, government or media, whatever it is, is not really allowing this information to come out, that the situation is actually graver than what the public is, is even being made aware of because these changes are accelerating faster than uh, science even anticipated. Hmm. So uh, we're in for a lot of trouble. Is that what you're saying here? Well, yeah, but then there's, you know, there's this old, old uh, um uh, well, phrase, I guess you would say, it, uh, by uh, Albert Einstein. Actually, I even think Ben Franklin from the United States, Benjamin Franklin, uh, also said it. And it's basically, it goes like this. Uh, he, he, we, the, we cannot repair the problems or crises that we face using the same thinking that created those problems. Mm. And <laughs> that where this comes into play now is we are trying to use uh, to mechanisms at our disposal that we've had for a long time to to meet the crises, and yet it's the mechanisms that we're using that created the crises, so uh, we're actually making things worse in our effort to try to make them better <laughs> using old thinking. And why this is important is that new thinking has come into science within the last hundred years that is not fully made its way into the mainstream population. So, for example, the book that I wrote, Biology of Belief, this book actually has science in it that, the, that most people, most leading-edge scientists will say, what's so new about this? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and why it's important for me to make this point is that, yes, uh, leading-edge scientists know the stuff that I'm talking about in the book. But the public has no concept of the stuff I'm talking about in the book, and that's where the disconnect comes from. Mm -hmm. People are, are operating according to beliefs that current science finds to be totally untrue. And mm -hmm. as a result, the current population is misleading itself, thinking that it's doing perhaps the right things, when science has revealed that the things we're doing are actually very self-destructive. So the effort of the book and the effort, I hope, of some of the conversation that we have is basically to get to the to the lay audience, the mass public, uh, not the not the scientists. They, most of them know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It's the public, uh, and the public has been, um, I guess, they've been given a science that's that's uh, like a brief context of this is what science is about in school because you only have so much time, so you can't learn everything about everything. So you get a summary. Unfortunately, I think the summary that people have received about science has misled them in beliefs about who they are and how they operate and what's going on in this planet because we're still operating from false ideas like the like our lives are in some way controlled by our genes for example mm, yeah, uh, yeah this is a general consensus because this is what schools essentially teach in their abbreviated courses uh, genes control life so uh, well scientists at the leading edge say well this is not true uh, well that that's great except Scientists constitute some little tiny, uh, minuscule percent of the population. The rest of the global population is operating from beliefs that are outdated and are actually very destructive, and that's why our world is, is, is moving toward this destruction, because the people aren't aware of the new science. Um, so this is, a, in a way, a combined uh, effort. I mean, in schools, we are being handed down information that isn't um, uh, well it, it it's not going deep enough but but yet that is you know one problem in in the entire aspect too to try to edu educate people but not um, you know efficiently or, or not information that is being uh, applied um, within you know something that we actually can learn from you know yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's easy for me to go in a classroom and in like five minutes say, oh, there are these things called genes, and genes are involved with programming the traits of living organism, and therefore genes control traits. And we walk away and people say, yeah, I understood that. And yet the reality is genes don't really control traits. They're, they're associated with the traits, but the control is not in the genes. And, and there are several reasons, uh, as I said, uh, why this information is coming out. One is 
it takes a bit more time to explain. It's easier to give a capsule summary 